So I was really lucky and I got to interview Desmond Wong of the Gentle Bros, which is the company that developed Cat Quest for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, if you haven't already checked out my uh, review of the game, make sure you head on over to youtube.com slash run, jump, stomp, and you can uh, find the video there uh, of the review. And um, th he was a really nice guy to talk to, very personable, and uh, I had a lot of fun talking to him. So make sure that you... Uh, Give this a listen and um, make sure you check out their game as well. Okie dokie. Hey, listen. Why don't you tell me your history as a gamer? Oh, okay. I think I've been gaming as, lo as long as I can remember. Like when I was young, my parents used to uh, get me those. Um, I wasn't even playing on those consoles yet. It was those handheld devices they used to sell in uh, like Toys R Us and stuff like that, where you could only play like one game. So like Game I and Watch? Yeah, I, th I think so. I can't really remember the name. There was like this basketball game that was just pixels on the screen and stuff like that. It was like really rudimentary. Um, my first major console, I think it was one of those. Uh, it was the Sega Saturn, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so played Sonic on, Sonic on those and stuff like that. Uh, then moved up to PlayStation 1. Um, I, I totally missed the, the N64 era. So like Mario, Zelda, I totally missed all those when I was a kid. I went straight to PlayStation, so I've been catching up on all those games. Uh, when I when I got older, when, when I got older, um, yeah, and I've been playing every every single um console from then on, like PlayStation Three, Four, uh, got the Wii, Wii U, Switch. I'm a huge PC gamer as well. I play lots of PC games. Um, yeah, my favorite game of all time is probably either it's it's a tie between Witcher Three and uh now Breath of the Wild. I'm a huge open world guy. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that's a little bit about uh, what kind of gamer I am. That's How awesome. about you? Yeah, a buddy of mine keeps telling me I have to play Witcher 3 and I just can't get around to it. Uh, but it's oh, definitely it's, on my list. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really good. Yeah, it's one of those games you've got to play. Uh, what's your what's your guilty pleasure game? Like the game where where everybody else seems to think, oh man, this game's not very good. But you're like, man, I love this game. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I know what you mean. Like, kind of like Dynasty Warriors, right? Like, everyone seems to hate it, but the people who really like it, they really, really like it. Um, for me, damn, that's a tough question because kind of like the, the, the games I really enjoy are kind of like kind of accepted in the in by everyone else. So I'm, I don't really have a guilty pleasure, I think. All right. Yeah. Have you played Fire Emblem Warriors? Um, I have not. If, if yeah. you like the Dynasty Warriors games, and I've never played one before, um, uh -huh. but if you like the Fire Emblem games, I guess is what I should have said, it, like the way that they kind of mash up Fire Emblem and the Warriors games together is really, really interesting. I see. Well, I, I kind of have a little bit of a bias against uh, the Dynasty Warriors franchise because I, I used to work on those. So like oh. it's it yeah it kind of reminds me of my work like 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 my job back then so it doesn't yeah so that I can't I can't really enjoy it for as it just being a game so yeah it, yeah so it it kind of sucks but yeah so <laughs> I I <laughs> why don't you yeah. tell me a little bit about games that you've uh, that you've worked on then oh um yeah so before I started uh, the gentle bros with my friends uh, we all used to work at Koei Tecmo so over there we worked on uh, uh, I, I personally worked on Dynasty Warriors 8 I think uh, yeah it was Dynasty Warriors, Dynasty Warriors 8 uh, Hyrule Warriors for the Wii U um, worked on Fatal Frame 5 uh worked on a bunch of the bunch of techmo games like dead or alive uh ninja gaiden and stuff like that uh my partner worked on neo um yeah so those were the games that we worked on yeah awesome when yeah and then you made gentle bros which by the way i really yeah. like the name of the company and oh, thank um, you. <laughs> was cat quest your first game that you made as that company um, not, no, it wasn't. Uh, our first game was actually Slashy Hero. It was a, it started off as a mobile game and it was something that we did while working in, uh, Koei Tecmo. So it was just totally something, uh, that we worked on in our free time. Uh, we totally got permission from it, from uh, the high ups at the company saying like, Hey, can we just do this? 
after work they were totally cool with it because mainly because we were working on uh, console games and uh, uh slashy hero was supposed to be a mobile title so it was it, there wasn't really much conflict at all um that game we, we were close to completion uh and i decided to kind of like ship that game to a couple of publishers um congregate decided to pick it up um and we used that opportunity to leave the company and start the gentle bros so um Congregate gave us some money to start with. We used that money to uh, to launch our company. And uh, we launched Slashy Hero about like a couple of months after that. And uh, when it came out, we supported it for a little while. And then we started work on Cat Quest. So that's kind of how we got to where we are today. Awesome. Well, speaking of where we are today, why don't you tell me, like, what's the elevator pitch for Cat Quest? Oh, the elevator pitch was basically an open world game about cats. So that 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 was pretty much the idea uh, that we came up with. But um, the the final idea of Cat Quest was a really long road. It started off as a dancing game. Um, we went through many different iterations, and uh, we finally came out with the idea that we got today. So it was a lot of a uh, lot of uh, code that we wrote, a lot of art that we had to throw away. Um, and yeah, we just kept changing the idea until something finally clicked. Um, but the idea of cats was always around there. We really wanted to make a game about cats. And we noticed that there wasn't really um, an RPG or open world RPG that centered around cats. I mean, in, in Skyrim, you could, you, could, you could play as the Khajiit, which is the closest cat race, I guess. But yeah, we wanted to make a a game that was fully themed around cats so everything will be a cat pun everything in the world will be designed with cats in mind and yeah that was where the idea of cat quest came about you, you mentioned uh that you, you know you had a lot of cat puns how did that affect the time it takes for localization and you were not kidding there are a lot oh. of puns in the game but it must have yeah, really yeah, made yeah. things difficult yeah so um but it was it was difficult, but a lot of the localization people that we worked with, like the translators and and stuff like that, they 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 said that it was tough, but it was really fun to do as well. So like um, we we don't really know how well it turned out, obviously, because we we we, we can't really read those languages. But from what our fans tell us, uh, they say that uh, it it was done really well. Like 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 a lot of the puns that that we came up with didn't really get lost in translation surprisingly so for us we, we knew that this might have been a problem like a lot of people told us to hey stay away from puns it's not going to translate well to other languages and stuff like that so but then to us we we, we felt that we didn't really want to compromise our overall vision for the game if 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 puns couldn't work in other languages i mean so so be it it would just be a, a more regular translation of our text as long as one of the languages or as or a couple of langu languages managed to get the puns that would have been enough for us so yeah, I guess it was tough, but um, I think the, the 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 people we chose to do the translation really put through and did a pretty good job. Yeah. What was the original language that you like designed the game in? Oh, it was English. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was gonna say that the 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 localization team did a fantastic job uh, with the puns in English, but I guess we have <laughs> no idea of how they did with the other things, but. You know, I, I think that the the jokes and the puns in the game are really hilarious. And my son and I laughed a lot while we were playing this oh, game. Thank you so much. Yeah, we had a we had a lot of fun um, coming up with the puns as well. Uh, it was like to the point where we kind of uh, were talking to puns like amongst themselves in the amongst ourselves in the office. <laughs> yeah, it's, it like totally like invaded our personal lives and stuff like that. So yeah, it's pretty cool, and uh, I I but I think we've kind of run out of of puns to do, and we might have gone a little overboard. So yeah, sorry about that, everyone. Is it gonna make it difficult for DLC in the future? Like, you mean like coming, coming up, up with, with new DLC? puns? Um, not exactly. I mean, there's this this like after a while you start to go into rhythm, like you start to understand how the puns are made, like purr or like paw, you, you, you start to realize that there's kind of a lot of, that there's a couple of words or there's actually a lot of words where you can you, where you can slip those paw and purr um, words into it to create a pun. So it gets easier after a while and 
yeah, it's it's just how far we want to go with it, how cringe worthy we want to go with it. Uh, but yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> so uh, speaking of DLC, is there there are plans for DLC to come to Cat Quest in the future? Um, there are plans for updates. We're not so sure about full fledged DLCs because we really want to move on to uh, the next project that we want to do. It, it'll, it'll still be in the Cat Quest universe and. Um, and yeah, it's gonna. We we we're just thinking right now whether we want to save a lot of the ideas we have, uh, for DLC for Cat Quest, or whether we want to put it into a new game where we can do a better job. So kind of like a lot of the ideas we have, where some some of it we're saving it for updates, others we're saving it for the next game, like the better ones we're saving it for the next game and stuff like that. Um, as to whether we have we're gonna have full flesh DLCs, um, right now we we're not ready to announce anything yet. Uh, but yeah, fair enough. But, but stay, but yeah, but stay still, but but stay tuned for um, any announcements that we'll have in the future. Oh, definitely. So you said that you worked on um, Hyrule Warriors for the Wii U, and now you've brought a game to the Switch. I'm curious, as a developer, uh, how right. what was your experience like? Uh, how has it changed going from Wii U development to Switch development? <sighs> Oh, I mean, I can't really say much about that because um, I was an artist on that project and um, and we, we, we only really worked on that project for a very short while. Uh, so in terms of art production, it's it's not much different across any platform, like whether you're working on a right. PlayStation or, or Xbox or, or, or Wii, uh, it's actually not that much different. You, we, we're given the engine to work with the previewer and stuff like that and we, and we, and we can just view our assets through that. So fundamentally, the way of working on art assets, it's it's always the same. Um, but right now, I I can I, I I can share a little bit of how the Switch development differs from like other platforms like Steam, uh, PlayStation and stuff like that. And uh and yeah, the 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 Switch version has been very smooth sailing. It has been very easy to work with the dev kit, much easier than uh, PlayStation or or or, or any other uh, platforms out there. Um, was the the update process is a little bit of a bitch though, but, but yeah, but that but that's after launch, uh yeah. So I I I would say it's pretty good. I've heard horror stories. I, I've heard horror stories about the Wii U development though from my friends who have worked on it. So I mean, judging from what they've they've told me, I think the Switch, I think Switch development in general is a lot better than what it was previously. So you were an artist on uh, previous topics or f- previous games. I, I imagine now that it, that uh, Gentle Bros is your company, you have to do a lot more than just make art assets. So what is it that you do on your dev team over at Gentle Bros? Oh, ab- absolutely. I mean, besides the artist, I'm also the game designer and uh, I do a lot of the business stuff and marketing stuff too. So yeah, a, a lot of people think game development is just art, programming, um, code and stuff like that, but there's a lot of things in the background that, that 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 goes into it too. Like starting your own company in Singapore, at least there's a bunch of paperwork. In fact, I think anywhere in the world there'll be a lot of paperwork. There's like taxes to do. Uh, we have we, we have this thing in Singapore called CPF, which is really annoying. Um, yeah, and and all the business stuff like talking to uh publishers, um, talking to journalists, talking to the media like you guys. Um, thinking of a marketing plan back then when, when we were working in Kowe, we just needed to do our job that was put in front of us. Now we kind of need to plan like two years down the road, uh, what we're going to do for our next project, how we're going to market it. Um, and, and usually this all comes together. Like for example, we, you don't want to make a game that is going to be tough to market. Yeah. You want to, you want to make a game that people will like, uh, that they'll be easy to sell later down the road. You don't want to dig yourself into a hole basically. Um, yeah, so there's all these extra things now to to think about. Um, I've never answered so many emails in my life. Like <laughs> every every day I, I wake up, there's like ten emails waiting for us. Uh, and yeah, so it's been really different, but it's been really fun as well. Uh, yeah, that's a good problem really, to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, being busy is a good problem. Like 
Um, and, and, and we've really felt the difference with Cat Quest. Um, for Slashy Hero, it was a moderate success. We had like a million downloads on on mobile, but it was a free to play game, so a million downloads is pretty is 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 decent. Um, but with Cat Quest, we've had a lot more fan feedback. I think we've had a lot more traction with Cat Quest, and and yeah, every day our Facebook page or Twitter, there's always someone asking us something. So we've been supporting our fans with uh, by answering them by supporting the community. And yeah, we, we read everything, like all the reviews, we read all the Steam stuff, like all the good stuff and all the bad stuff too. Yeah, it's both been fun and sometimes infuriating, but yeah, but overall it's, it's, an, it's a really, really awesome experience. That's awesome. Uh, I asked my audience uh, if they had any questions for you and Captain Logan, uh, he said he, he, that they noticed that you guys purposely had a lot of quests that were repeated. Were, was that so that you could grind levels in order to level up to get to the next point? And what was your reasoning behind uh, doing uh, repeated quests versus more independent quests? Um, what do you mean by repeated quests? Um, like, I guess one that I would, that, that pops to mind is, and it's not my question, so I'm not sure if this is what exactly right, yeah, what he's yeah. talking about, but one that uh, comes to mind is like the ones where you had to ping pong between those two houses, uh, multiple times, to- like over and over again, uh, where the, something about the sister, I don't want to spoil it for people. Oh, who I see. I see. Right. Cause yeah, that, that question, uh, is, is. Okay, so what, what we try to do was we try to make every quest different from each other. So it might have been repetitive in terms of the design, but the story of, of each quest line is is all unique. Uh, for that particular quest that was done on purpose, it was, it's, it's because the that whole area is the Twin Towns, so that the, the quests are also related to each other. So we want to do something special, kind of like um, the quest you do in one of the towns, you do the same quest again in the not- in the next town, but with a slight twist. And that twist will always lead to the next part of that quest line. So that was the theme for that quest. Um, but, it, but I think besides that, we don't really do that in any other of the quest lines. So we have, yeah, so the other quest lines are all totally different stories. Um, and yeah, so I mean, hopefully... Um, if it all turned out well, everyone would, everyone would feel that each storyline would have been uh, unique and different. But I guess maybe we didn't really do a good job there. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that you didn't do a good job. I thought it was really fun. Um, oh, thanks. So, uh, you know, I don't really have any other questions about Cat Quest specifically. Is there something that you want to talk about with Cat Quest or maybe your next project at all? Um, hmm. I don't really have any questions in mind about Cat Quest. I mean, it's it, it's been out for quite a while already, so so yeah, I we we're, we're just like totally full on um wanting to do our next project right now, and uh, yeah, we've been doing concepts, coming up with really cool ideas, and yeah, stuff like that. Hope people would like what we do next. So <laughs> what 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 do you do for fun that has nothing to do with video games? What do I do for fun? I actually love to go cycling. Uh, around 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 town and stuff like that. Yeah, like cycling in parks, around rivers and lakes. Uh, yeah, I just like getting some exercise, <laughs> getting out of the house now and then. You know, getting out of the computer. Uh, but yeah, besides that, I really do love playing games. Like the switch, the switch makes that even harder to get rid of. Like now, I bring <laughs> I bring my switch with me everywhere. Like on the train, usually on the train, I use the chance to read like a book or something. But now. I'm just playing games on on the train as well, so yeah, it's kind of bad and good at the same time. So, so what was your favorite game of last year for the Switch? Oh, I mean, it it was it's really it's really tough between tough choice between Mario and Zelda. I kind of enjoyed Mario more, but I accept that Zelda made greater strides in the open world genre than Mario did in the platforming genre. So I got to give it to Zelda as my favorite game of 2017. Yeah, that's a that's a good answer. And I think Mario is also a good answer. I think when um, when I was working on my year end show, uh, that's that's the thing that I was having trouble with is picking between those two because they were just both were just the pinnacle of their genres. And I thought it was great. Um, Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, Mario did everything right. 
absolutely everything right and I had way more fun okay not way more fun but I had a lot more enjoyment out of Mario like I really could not stop playing that game there was never a dull moment in Mario Odyssey whereas in Zelda there were moments where you're like just walking across like white source of land and it, it does get a little bit boring after a while like especially searching for all those Korok seeds or finding that last shrine out of like hundreds of them um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I think Zelda really, really, it, it really gave a new experience, whereas Mario kind of perfected the formula, I suppose. Well, thanks for so much for coming on the show and talking to me. Where is it that people can find you and your company uh, on, on the internet? Right. So you can find us on Twitter at The Gentle Bros, and uh, you can like CatQuest on its Facebook page. Do like us on our Facebook page too. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for coming on, Desmond. No problem.